Hello, everyone. This is Professor Sexton with a video lecture on Nathaniel Hawthorne's Young Goodman Brown. Uh, in this case, I'm going to ask that you watch the video lecture first um, before you actually read the story, because I think watching the video lecture first uh, will help guide your reading a little bit better. So Nathaniel Hawthorne's Young Goodman Brown was published in 1835 and takes place in 1600s New England in Salem Village. So even though the publication is 1835, the story is actually set in the 1600s. Many of you may be familiar with Salem as the place of the Salem witch trials, which occurred between 1692 and 1693. And while Hawthorne's story doesn't directly address those trials, the Calvinist Puritan uh, religious belief system is a major part of Hawthorne's story. Calvinism uh, was a branch of the Protestant faith that broke from the Roman Catholic Church in the 16th century. And for Calvinists, um, God was all powerful and humans were deprived sinners. They also believed that God had a chosen few people known as the elect who were destined for salvation. All others were condemned to eternal damnation. However, not all Calvinists were Puritans. Puritans were a strict set of Calvinists who mainly existed in the early days of the European settlement in North America and lived under a very strict moral code and were quick to damn anyone who did not follow that code. Since they did not know who was part of the elect, they lived in a constant state of spiritual anxiety, searching for signs of God's favor and or anger. Nathaniel Hawthorne's great-great-grandfather, John Hawthorne, and that name was spelled H-A-T-H-O-R-N-E, had been one of the judges in the Salem witch trials. And it's speculated that Nathaniel added the W to his last name to distance himself from his family's participation in those trials. In some aspects, we can read traces of Hawthorne's own struggles with the legacy of his family in the character of young Goodman Brown who in the story learns that his family has not been as pure as he believed. We can also read the story as an allegory. The simple definition of an allegory is a literary work in which literary elements, such as characters, plot, images, and so on, can also stand for something else to reveal a second meaning or more code. For instance, names and young Goodman Brown serve two purposes. While young Goodman Brown is our protagonist, the central character in the work, his name is also a reference to his age, young, um, which can denote innocence and being unaware, and good man is how he views himself as a good man. His wife's name is Faith, which is also symbolic of faith, <laughs> the trust and confidence that we place in someone, a person, or something, such as the belief in a God or a religious doctrine. This lecture is going to be somewhat different than previous ones because I'm going to ask you a lot of questions to consider without always providing answers to them. The story begins with young Goodman Brown leaving his wife at night for some mysterious night errand. One repetitive descriptive element that we learn about Faith is that she has pink ribbons in her hair. What might these pink ribbons represent symbolically? Um, also know how reluctant he is to leave Faith behind to go on this errand. They have only been married for three months, and these three months can also represent that his relationship with Faith, not Faith his wife, but Faith and religion, uh, is new and in another precarious stage where it can be tested and challenged. In many ways, the journey into the force is a test of his faith. We learn that he's going into the forest to meet a man who we are told has a striking family resemblance to young Goodman Brown. And this is a quotation from the story. As nearly as could be discerned, the second traveler was about 50 years old, apparently in the same walk of life as Goodman Brown and bearing a considerable resemblance to him, though perhaps more in expression than features, they still might have been taken for father and son. This man, this man has a staff in his hand, which bore the likeness of a great black snake. So given how this story is progressing, who do you think this man might represent? While young Goodman Brown meets this man willingly, he begins to have second thoughts about being in his company. He remarks that, quote, my father never went into the forest on such an errand, nor his father before him. 
We have been a race of honest men and good Christians since the days of the martyrs. The man, and this is the man that a young Goodman Brown has encountered, uh, however, disabuses young Goodman Brown of this notion that his family has been pure, telling him, quote, I have been as well acquainted with your family as with everyone among the Puritans. As the journey continues, young Goodman Brown sees Goody Klaus in the forest. She's a member of the church uh, and she had taught him his catechism, which are the principles of a religion that are used to instruct its members. He tries to see her in the forest and he doesn't want her to see him with the old, old, older man. So he decides to split from him, but stays long enough to see Goody Klaus encounter the old man. The old man touches uh, her with his staff and she exclaims in surprise, the devil. Now, while on one level, the devil is to register her surprise because she was startled. But on another level, the traveler responds with, then Goody Klaus knows her old friend, which seems to indicate that he is actually the devil. Young Goodman Brown is indecisive if he will continue or not, sometimes saying that he will not travel any further, yet he continues to travel. He sees and hears other people from Salem, Salem Village in the forest all journeying towards the meeting in the forest. While he is surprised with so many of the people who he knows and have thought of as good people all journeying to the secret meeting, it is the presence of his wife, Faith, there that truly gets to him. He spots the pink ribbons of Faith fluttering through the sky. He catches it and cries, my faith is gone. The sense that she too is in the forest that night forces him to continue until he comes to the meeting and finds to his dismay all the people of Salem Village gathered there. The meeting is being held by a figure who is described as being dressed and similar to a preacher. And this is a quotation from the story. Both in garb, which means dress, and minor to some great divine of the New England churches. A voice calls out, bring forth the converts. And young Goodman Brown steps forth and swears that a person in the shape of his own dead father beckons him to advance. The dark figure then says to the new converts, welcome my children to the communion of your race. The figure then gives a sermon and ends by reaffirming, evil is the nature of mankind. Evil must be your own happiness. And then repeats how he opened with, welcome again, my children, to the communion of your race. This line in the sermon are typically read as the figure's way of letting all humans know that no one is entirely pure, as young Goodman Brown would like to believe that he and his family have been, and that all people have both good and bad in them, which goes against the Puritan strict belief in either all good or all bad. Young Goodman Brown looks at Faith and tries to tell her to resist and to look up to heaven, but the scene in the forest abruptly ends here. The next paragraph begins with the following. Whether Faith obeyed, he knew not, because young Goodman Brown still finds himself alone as if the meeting had not happened at all. He wanders out of the forest the next morning, and he's a changed man. He now feels that everyone in his village is evil and there's no good left in the world. We're not sure if what young Goodman Brown experienced was real or a dream. The narrator asked the question, had Goodman Brown experienced, had Goodman Brown fallen asleep in the forest and only dreamed a wild dream of a witch meeting? Notice that in that quotation, the young had been dropped from his name. And what do you think that possibly mean? In the final paragraph, the narrator backtracks and tells us that it was the dream of an evil omen for young Goodman Brown. He becomes a sad and distrustful man who can no longer listen to the congregation singing hymns, singing psalms, yet he still goes to church, and he no longer finds any comfort in faith. He shrinks from her bosom, yet he remains married to her. We are told that when he died, no hope for verse was written upon his tombstone, for his dying hour was gloom. What young Goodman Brown witnessed in the forest had such a negative effect upon him that he found no joy in life. Yet given the time period and the tight hold of Puritanism on him, he remains in, in the village and with his wife. 
a simple summary is that Young Edmund Brown is a story of a young man who is new to his faith and goes into the forest to test it. Why he does this is open to debate. Once in the forest, he encounters elements that goes against what he'd been taught, that people are either good or bad. But in the forest, he learns that all people have both good and bad in them. This new lesson is too much for him, and he emerges not knowing how to reconcile what he had witnessed um, with what he had been taught. And it leaves him lonely and isolated, mainly because he now views himself as the only good man left in the village and one of the elect. And even his faith is not enough to sustain him. So as you're reading Young Goodman Brown, read it on two levels. Read it for the actual story that it represents. Um, the story of a young man, newly married, three months, leaves his wife, goes into the forest, encounters a meeting. Whether this is real or whether this is a dream that has this effect on him and governs the way he lives the rest of his life. And then read it allegorically. What could it be that these different characters in the scenario represent? I mean, what does it mean, young Goodman Brown? What does it mean, faith? What does it mean to encounter this mysterious figure in the forest? What does the sermon mean? And what is the effect of that sermon on young Goodman Brown? So you read this story for the characters that are in the story, but you also read it for the larger meaning that it might represent. Um, I hope that you enjoy um, reading the story. If you have any questions or the things about the story that are unclear to you or you want to discuss with me in more detail, feel free to send me an email. Okay, I look forward to um, hearing your um, comments on the discussion board that will be related to the story. Take care, everyone. Bye.